Danielle Choke, the first Kachikel missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. A tribute by Larry Richman. Danielle Choke was born December 11, 1953, in a little town of 5,000 people in the mountains of Guatemala. This is the passport photo of Danielle Choke's family when they went to the Mesa Temple to be sealed. This is a picture of Danielle and his family the day that he left on his mission. He was the first missionary to serve from the town of Patsicilla, Guatemala, in fact, from any of the Cachiquel speaking towns. I was Elder Choke's missionary companion for five weeks in the town of Comalapa. During those five weeks, he taught me things that I thought that I already knew, like what dedication and commitment are all about. Elder Choke was an especially effective missionary, not only because he was a native speaker of Kachikel, but because he was humble, and he had a way of explaining the gospel in a simple way that the Spirit could touch the hearts of the people. The most productive day of my entire mission was during those five weeks with Elder Choke. We taught ten discussions that day, and as we knocked on doors to find those ten people to teach, and after being turned away at a door, Elder Choke would often run, not walk, to knock on the next door. We had a somewhat unorthodox mission. In the Indian towns, all the men would go to the work in the fields, and only women and children were at home during the day. So we would follow the men into the fields where we could teach them. This is a picture of Elder Choke teaching a man and his son during their lunch break. When the rains came, it didn't stop the work. The people still went to work in the fields, and so did we. On February 4th, 1976, at 3 a.m., an earthquake hit Guatemala. The quake measured 7.6 on the Richter scale and lasted 45 seconds. As you can see in this picture, adobe homes became rubble. The earthquake was 90 times stronger than the earthquake that leveled Managua, Nicaragua in 1972. That night, about 25,000 people died, 80,000 were injured, 250,000 homes were destroyed, and nearly 1.5 million people were left without shelter. Even homes built of brick came tumbling down. This is the church building in the town of Patsasia before the earthquake and after. Even the reinforced concrete beams weren't sufficient to withstand the force and the shaking of the earthquake. This is the inside of the cultural hall. And these are the remains of Danielle's family's home. The collapsed home killed his mother, who was pregnant at the time, and two of his brothers. Danielle's father was also the president of the Patsicia branch. So not only did he have to deal with the death of his wife and three children, he was responsible for members in the town, all of whom had lost their homes. In total, we buried 15 members who died in the town of Patsicia that night. Elder Choke soon returned home from the town of Sumpongo, where he was serving as a missionary at the time of the earthquake, so that he could comfort his father and his remaining family. This is a picture of his father, Pablo Choke, on the left. Then you see Elder Choke, then his younger brother, and on the right, a missionary, behind the fallen church in Patsicia, after most of the, rub of the rubble had been removed. In spite of the fact that Daniel had lost his mother and three siblings, he was on a mission, and he was undaunted in his commitment as a missionary. This is a picture taken days after the earthquake. Danielle on the left and another elder are teaching the non-member husband of the Relief Society president, who also died in the earthquake. And this is a picture of the baptism a few days later. Elder Choke worked alongside the other missionaries for two months after the earthquake, helping people shovel their way out of all the debris left by the devastating earthquake. The few walls that remained standing were unsafe and had to be brought down, so we would pick away 
at the cement coating of the adobe or brick and then push the wall over or pull it over. Two months after the earthquake on March 29, 1976, we were working in the town of Potsoon tearing down walls when a wall similar to this one gave way prematurely and fell. Everyone scrambled to safety except for Elder Choke, who was crushed by a four-foot section of brick and cement. A fellow missionary gave him artificial respiration while he was rushed to a nearby school that had been converted into a hospital. But the Lord soon called him home. We thought that we had seen the end of death from the earthquake two months before that, but now it took another life that was dear to us. All we could do was ask ourselves, why was it him under that wall and not me? In spite of the difficulties he had in this life, Elder Choke was always happy and was a good friend to us. He was also an asset to the mission, being the only native Kachikel speaking missionary. He patiently taught us to understand his people and to speak their language. The mission president and I prepared Daniel's body and placed it in a casket. He was only about five foot two, but he was a giant of a man in my eyes. We left on the lapel of his suit the button which he wore, which read, Por sacrificio se dan bendiciones. Blessings come through sacrifice. This is a photo of missionaries and members at Elder Choke's funeral services. And this is a picture of our mission president and Elder Choke's father, Pablo Choke, at the funeral. In his remarks, the mission president said, I have had the privilege to interview Elder Choke and to know the intimate details of his life. I assure you that Elder Choke left this world completely dedicated and completely pure. I just hope I'm in as good a shape when I die as Elder Choke was. I can only imagine the feelings of a father who sent his son on a mission and then lost his wife and three children in the earthquake. I can only imagine the faith it took for him to be strong for his family and for all the other members of the branch who also lost family. Then I can only imagine the agony two months later when he lost his missionary son in this accident. Through all these tests, President Choke remained strong and true. He is one of the most noble, dignified, and humble men I know. He and his wife had given birth to ten children, and she was expecting her eleventh when she was killed in the earthquake. Pablo was then left with only six living children. Elder Choke was deserving of two honors. He was the world's first Kachikel missionary, and then he became the first Kachikel missionary in the spirit world. In Doctrine and Covenants 138.57, we read of the vision given to President Joseph F. Smith about the spirit world. I beheld that the faithful elders of this dispensation, when they depart from mortal life, continue their labors in the preaching of the gospel of repentance and redemption, through the sacrifice of the only begotten Son of God, among those who are in darkness and under bondage of sin in the great world of the spirits of the dead. Elder Choke's casket was placed in a tomb which was built over the grave of his mother, two brothers, and the twelve other members of the branch that we buried two months before that. On the front of his tomb is a marble headstone with the following inscription, When ye are in the service of your fellow beings, ye are only in the service of your God. Mosiah 2.17 Daniel Choke Shikai Born December 11, 1953 Died March 29, 1976. The first Kachikel missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who died serving his people. I love you, Elder Choke. I look forward to the day when I cross the veil and meet you again with open arms. And I can have the chance to thank you like I never really did in this life for your friendship and for the example you showed me.